But I think, Lord, we need, to, we need to be determined. We need to be determined that we're going to praise you and we're going to worship you and we're going to invite your presence and we're going to do the best that we can to get your attention so that you will come and dwell with us and that all this stuff has to ease up. You know, will it go away completely? But it has to ease up. Because when it comes in the presence of the Lord, it can't stay. Just a thought. I just want to thank you, Lord. That's the perfect song this morning because everybody was talking about needing something, needing a test result, like she was saying. Everything that Lynn said, we've been needing to just say, thank you, Lord. It will come in time, but only when it's God's timing. But we still got to praise Him till we see the results. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I just want to thank
just want to thank God this morning. Thank Him every day. I'm like Him. When I get up, I, before I get out of bed, I start thanking Him. Thank Him for another day. Thank Him for bringing me through the night. Just, you know, we got so much to thank God for. We're blessed so much. And if we would just believe, really believe what God's Word said, it will make a big difference in our lives. We read it, but somehow we don't apply it to ourselves. You know? We just don't. You know? I do love Him, and I thank Him. He's brought me a long ways.
give us carbon we out the furnace, they don't give up. They only get some slight stuff. They don't give up. They they keep praying. They won't. They're like an old bulldog. They hold on. They hold fast. I mean, the daddies pray too, and I love the daddies. And you know, kids, I don't know, they could not have made without their fathers. They they direct them in so many ways. But uh, I love the Lord this morning. I love all of you all. I just want to be what God wants me to be. That He's amazing. Like my Michelle and Carol that one day, He put a smile on your face, but sometimes you're hurt inside. And uh, I do, I miss my little fellow so bad sometimes. I can't understand it, but it won't be long. If I don't know, we will all go. It doesn't all we'll be wrapped out here, and I don't think it'll be too long. I mean, it may be, it might be some years. I don't know, nobody knows it there now. So, you know, this, we know that he's coming back and he's coming to get his children. And let's just all stay ready.
Absolutely the Lord will heal. Absolutely God can move mountains and nothing is too hard for my God. And there is not one miracle that you can come up with to tell me that my God could not do. But, oh, I'm not on at all. I'm on here, but I'm not. I'm all right. It's all right. Can you hear me? Uh, all right. Don't worry about it then. If it ain't on Facebook, you should have been here. Sorry. I ain't stopping. So, when we get into this, you see, we want to say, because a lot of people will start misinterpreting, well, I prayed. I prayed hard. I prayed desperately. But God didn't move. Did you pray His will? Did your desperation and your faith meet His will and His time? Because guess what? I don't care how hard I pray, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna move God's will. I might change his mind. I might delay some things. I can turn to the wall and I can weep bitter tears and he can give me more time, but it didn't change his word. So God's timing is extremely important. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna be over in Genesis. I want you all to turn to this 21. I'm going to go back to 18 real quick. There's where we will be. But there's something I want to read in 18. And the child grew and was weaned. 
And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was born. Again, I love that it was simple in the story. The question came, what is too hard for the Lord? You laugh at, at, word, at the word God has given you because you don't see the possibility. But what is too hard for God? What is too hard for God? Just because you don't see it now don't mean it's not coming. Just because it's not the way you think it should be does not mean it's not coming. Just because it's not in my timing doesn't mean it's not coming. And you know what? Maybe sometimes the timing is enough to prepare you. We all have a lot of ideas. We would do it differently. I think it should be handled this way. I wish it could be this way. But again, it's God's timing and God's appointed place. You see, sometimes our appointed place called there, only thing I'm really going to get, I might have what the rape is bringing. I'm going to have enough to survive. But guess what? In a famine and in a drought, if all I got is just enough, I'm doing better than most when people were dying. You need to understand, sometimes your place called there is a holding spot. Sometimes your place called there is, is a preparing ground. Sometimes it's, it's times that you need to strengthen your faith so that you are ready. Because guess what? When the blessing comes, you got to grow <laughs> It's not just the blessing and there you go. No, this was a blessing that now is something that I gotta grow. I gotta take care of. I don't get to just go and make kids and then, well, they're there. I gotta be there. I gotta take care of them. I gotta provide a lot of things for them. It's, I gotta make sure that what God blessed me with, I'm gonna grow. And it's going to continue to be a blessing to those around me. It's going to be a blessing to God. It's going to be, be used in the right way. And you see, Abraham was doing his best right before, the verse right before. It said when Isaac was eight years old, he, he circumcised him as the, as the Lord had commanded. He was following exactly what God had told him to do. This is my blessing. I will be the father that I need to be. Because this is God's blessing that I have waited my entire life. And now comes the celebration. Now comes the celebration because we've got him. He's grown. And he's waiting. And I'm going to celebrate what God has given me. What everyone said Sarah couldn't do, God did and did in his time. And it made sure everybody knew it. Go to verse 9. And Sarah saw. Sarah just got the blessing of her life. The thing that she never thought could happen. The thing that, that she laughed at when the, when word came from heaven itself that she was going to bear a son. She laughed and said, yeah, I'm going to do that in my old age. And then now she's got it. Now God has answered. And she's sitting there at the feast. Praise the Lord. But what she said. Uh oh. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, an Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham. Mom. Praise the Lord, it's a blessing. But she forgot to follow the time. Because that was Ishmael. How did Ishmael come about? Sarah went to Abraham and said, I'm too old, but you need to have an heir. You need a son. Here's my handmaid. Be careful when you try to go around God's time because you'll get an Ishmael instead of an Isaac. If you want to know how bad an Ishmael is, go ask Israel how it is right now. Because that's exactly what the heir of Ishmael is. 
That's where all of that, that's where all that fighting has come from in the Middle East ever since. Israel's had an enemy ever since, and it was all because somebody didn't have enough faith that when God spoke, I'm going to do what I spoke. Amen. But I'm too old. I'll do this. I'll do that. Get over it and move on. And you know what? Plow until he comes. You want to know what the Church of America's problem is? We don't have enough in us that when it gets a little bit hard, we won't put our head down and go. Put your head down and go. Guess what? It's not always easy. It's not always fun. There's plenty of times I don't see how God is going to get me out of this. But it doesn't mean that I take it up on myself and decide I'm going to move because this is actually what God meant. Because guess what? That was something that they never got rid of. Because God's promise was still in effect for the heir of Abraham. And you can even see, what, you can go and read through Genesis when she said, put Hagar out. And the angel came to Hagar. Your mistakes will affect your family. Amen. Your mistakes Amen. will affect generations. Amen. Just because I can't forgive somebody will affect my children and their children and everything else. One of the greatest things I ever heard, and it's something I put in my head. I actually heard it not long before I got married. And I put it in my head, and I focused on it, and I prayed on it, and I worked on it, and I did all these things because it was something so amazing. I heard, uh, I had, I heard somebody, a teacher, lay out how everywhere that a father fell, you can go all throughout Scripture, I pick a father and son. Everywhere the father fell, the son would fall too. When the father had a problem with something, it was amazing the son would have the same problem. All throughout Scripture. Because when the father doesn't know how to fix it, he can't show the son how. So I put that deep inside of me. When I was getting ready to get married, because obviously I'm going to when I get married, we're obviously going to have kids. And when I'm going to have to raise these kids, and I said, Lord, show me and, get, and let me know how to fix the mistakes. Because the things that have affected me, I do not want affecting my son. I don't want it to go on. I've got to break this here. Your Ishmael will affect a lot of things. That was an amazing, uplifting, praise the Lord story where God said, oh, you did laugh, and I'll make you laugh again when I give you a child. Imagine that story without that last verse. Sarah triumphant, walking into a feast where her son's been winged. And it's just the biggest celebration. Look what God has done. But the very thing that she put in is what she saw. The very thing that she put in the way. That's what her idea was. It was I cannot see where God will bring me to this. So I'm going to give you something else. Yes, Abraham should have been a leader and said no. But it was still her idea. So she saw at the blessing feast, at the celebration, she saw exactly what she brought in. What should have been the greatest celebration of her life, what caught her eye? Let me put it to you like this. What's the one thing in your life that keeps catching you every time you're trying to be happy? <clears throat> What's the one thing in your life that's catching you 
Every time it's supposed to be a blessing. Every time I'm sitting in a church service and I see everybody else that's, that's praising the Lord and raising their hands and, and, and just having a good time, what is the one thing that pops in my head about the time I feel like I need to raise my hands? What's the one thing that comes into my spiritual field of vision that when I'm there and I should be absolutely praising that it's able to get in? Your own self inflicted wound will still be a blessing. And that was a self inflicted wound to both her and Abraham. That, their, that generations later are still dealing with. I'm not going to get into all that, but guess what? You can't go back through genealogy and you can see Israel came from Isaac. Those that are attacking Israel right now <coughs> came from Israel. Yep. Right. But I forgive everybody else for that one person. Oh, why do I need to watch my temper? Do I really need to guard my eyes from that? Just one little thing. Just one thing. Well, I mean, that was one thing. Abraham, I mean, honestly, go back through his life. He didn't make, I'd say the man was more upstanding than me. He made a lot less mistakes than I did, according to what I read in the Bible. But man, that was a doozy. Also, I haven't been gone long enough to see generations come to see how bad I messed it up. But guess what? With God's blessing, with God's word, with God's honor, comes a whole lot of responsibility. If you want to be someone who is strong in the faith, someone who is closer to the Lord, someone who has the Lord's hand on them, you best understand what that responsibility is because God's promises are God's promises. Abraham had God's promise. But he messed up the time. But guess what? There's certain mistakes you can't cover up and there's certain mistakes that you can't go back and undo. And no, I'm not saying children are just <coughs> Somebody's trying to think that. But that was not the child God promised. That was not the one that God said is going to come from you, Abraham. And your seed will outnumber the stars in heaven. When God's made that promise, and then you decide your timing's better than His, you get an issue. And guess what? They're going to get more. There is no going back and undoing it. That's not that whole, I'm sorry. I got to step on your toe. Church, do you want to know what a lot of the problem with the Church of America is? That's the way we think of sin. Oh, it's just a new sin. Make a little mistake. Oh, I did it again. Let me explain something to you. Now I'm going to make this as simple, as plain as I possibly can. 
And I want every, if you hear nothing else I've preached today, hear this. Sin is very simple to find. Sin is very easy to tell what it is. Sin is anything. Anything that fools your relationship with God. Amen. By the way, I know I don't know where this came in at that there was big sin and little sin. Sin will not <coughs> enter the gates of heaven. So let me break this down to you very plain and very simple. There will be Christians that split hell wide open. Mm -hmm. For little sin. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God will not have something that is bigger than him in his relationship with you because that is sin and then give you heaven. If you want me to lay it out real plain for you. <coughs> and Jesus said it's better for you to pluck your eye out than, uh, than let it offend you. Right. It is a serious, serious business when we start talking about heaven and hell. And by the way, I promise you, if you think I'm kidding, you are going to see some people who have claimed to be Christians who probably are even, I would say, by the standards of this world, good people but do not have the relationship with God that they are supposed to, that will split hell wide open. I will make you that promise. Well, how do you know? Go read what Jesus said. That's all I can tell you. He laid it out pretty plain. It's better for me to cut off my hand better for me to pluck out my eye. What do you mean? It's better for me to go through this world as a physical amputee than to have something in my life that will cause me to sin. So if I can't control my hand, I would be better off to cut it off than to go through this walk and to have a hand that I can't control. If I can't control my eye where it looks, it is better for me to pluck my eye out and to go through this life blind than to try to enter into heaven with an eye that I can't control. It is better for me to cut my tongue off and to walk through this world unable to speak with, with, a, uh, with a sinful tongue than to, than to try to enter into heaven. By the way, that was red letter. It also let meals come up, thing. To teach your children to almost be better for meals stuff than something around your head. So if Jesus took it that serious. Where did we come up with this little sin idea? Where did we come up with Oh, I don't care about that. By the way, if you truly want to keep growing in your relationship with God, I don't know about you, but as I got older as a child, my mother expected different behavior from me as I got older. Guess what? If I was 15 and acted like I did when I was 5, she had something called a belt. <laughs> she might not have whipped me when I was 5 for doing that, but she whipped me when I was 15 for doing that. Why? Because I knew better then. So what, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if you've been in church and you've been taught, but you're still acting not much better than you did when you was not in church, you need to get over yourself, get off the milk, and start getting actually serious with the Lord. Amen. I'll lay it like this. I know pretty well everybody in here is married. Spouses, do you like it when your when your spouse says I love you? Mm -hmm. Makes me feel good when my spouse says she loves you. It does. It makes I get all giddy and happy. But guess what? If she told me every day that she loved me, but she only come home once a week, I'm probably not going to believe her. <laughs> what are you saying? 
I'm saying, if you only really ever talk to the Lord once a week, oh, but I, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Really? Because the only time you talk to Him is that, is that time that we pray before we let out service. Or when you actually need something, He's the spare tire. And you know what? I can't go to church twice in one day. That's just too much. I'm tired. I had a hard week. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I snap on those? Better you won't be back tonight for be mad at me anyway. So. If you want me to get down and real with you, I really don't care. If you get mad at me because I said you ain't dedicated enough to church, you can be mad at me all you want, but it might be you feel mad because you don't have enough dedication in you to show up. Amen. I can tell someone I love them all day, but if I never show up for them, how much do they believe me? Tell the Lord you love him all day, but you can't even show up and give you, let's say, I, I'll say at most, four hours on a Sunday between two services. I know we're tired. I know sickness comes into play, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you have every ability to be in his house and to be with those around you that he has placed around you to keep you strong. Okay. Or... Here's my favorite one. I think so and so is preaching tonight. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> don't worry, I don't think I'm preaching the rest of the month. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? If that's how you are, it's fine. I'll say it like this. If you think that's a strong relationship, on you. I just won't be standing in judgment for you. Don't bother me a bit. You ain't sent me to help. But now if I would say to you, hey, your dedication is lacking. You you're, you want to say you serve the Lord but you can't show up is, is lacking. And by the way, that can become an issue. Because guess what? If you're raising kids and all they see is oh, all I gotta do is show up on Sunday morning for Sunday school, <laughs> what's gonna happen when they hit hard times in their life and they think they only gotta show up once? I only gotta come once. <laughs> we, a lot of y'all have heard jo Josh say this. I grew up in the exact same family. When I was little, we had a drug problem in our family. We was drugged to and from church every time the doors was open. Josh can tell you stories of his daddy would be in a three month revival every single night. And guess what? They went to school, they did all that. Kenneth was working, they, and then they would get all of the pile in the car and drive an hour for three months straight every single day and go to a revival. Guess who else got to do that a lot? But it's okay. You, and there was plenty of people that told my mother that she was crazy. You don't need to worry about that while them kids were little. Well, guess what? That same person, they got a lot of kids that's out in the world, and she raised two preachers. So I'll just let the kids still do it. No, I'm tired. No. I don't, need, I don't need to be the outcast at work. You know, I probably could read my Bible tonight, but I got this, you know, NBA playoffs wrong. And I, get, I love basketball. I don't hardly miss a minute. I love playoffs. Nothing against that. But when I put it in front of the Lord, guess what it is? I see it. And guess what? You you want to say, you mean to tell me that you think I could go to hell for watching a ball game instead of reading the Bible? Yeah, I do. I would make it that plain. If it is more important to you than reading God's Word and having a relationship with the Lord, absolutely it will send you to hell. 
and you will burn for eternity. If you want me to lay it out that plain and simple, hell is hot, it is, there is a lake of fire, and no, I am not playing when I say this. Yes, I do believe that something as simple as a ball game can send you to hell. How much more plain do I need to make it? If it is more important to you than God, yes, it will send you to hell. Because he flat out said, I will have no other gods before me. Man, it's quiet. I can't Keep on, brother. By the way, guess what? I played sports probably as much as anybody. I practiced year-round, and when I was in high school, we practiced seven days a week. So guess what? Guess what our Sunday practice was? It was at 2 o'clock, which meant I went to church in the morning, went to basketball practice at 2 o'clock, and ran my guts out, practiced plays, and, and beat myself half to death, and was back in church at 6 o'clock. Right there was my coach that did it with me. So again, it is not wrong to be involved. It is wrong when it takes precedent. Amen. You don't, it's not that you don't have time, it's that you don't make time. There is zero reason. For you not that you will make time. Guess what? I promise you this. And I know this because he told me. If I were to call Vernon up and say, hey, I just got a new gun. Do you care if I come into the car and shoot? You know what exact words he told me? He said, you just let me know. I'll make time to go shoot guns. Why? Because it's important to me. He likes it. I like it too. <coughs> but if you don't have that same desire for your relationship with God notice I said relationship if you think I'm just talking about coming to church you've missed the point you missed it because guess what if the only time you get exposed to the word is right now when I'm preaching you're wrong here's what I'll tell you flat out don't you ever just take what I say at face value <coughs> You go back and study it for yourself. I love Joe. I love Brian. I love my uncle Kenneth. I love Josh. I love them all to death. But do you think I ever just take what they say at face value? And they would say the same thing. If you are not making time to get in the Word, get closer in your walk with the Lord, pray. Read, study. You know what? Some of my favorite times throughout the week, I have to drive from here to Lexington every single day. I get to have time alone with the Lord. I can put on a book that I've got from you know different things, or I sometimes I just put on the Bible, or I can put on, or I can put on music that's going to feed my soul. Or you know what? Here's the best thing I've ever done. Sometimes. I turned it all off. I turned it all off. And here's the other thing. When I turned it all off, I know it's going to be, now listen, it's going to be hard for y'all to believe this, but I promise I do it sometimes. I turned it all off, and then I stopped talking. Listen. Why? Because sometimes I think he gets tired of trying to talk over me. So sometimes I'm driving. And I'm, and I'm meditating. And I'm quiet. Why? Because I want to hear what it's going to tell me. Not me. It's going to be audible. It'll be something spoken into my spirit. But guess what? When I'm quiet and I'm still and I'm focused on Him, He has the ability to speak to me. Well, But if that isn't part of your life, if that's not part of your walk, if something else is more important, that's it. And Ishmael will affect generations. By the way, your Ishmael consists of him.
not just given my heart. See, because salvation is free. It was never zero cost. Zero cost for me to come give my heart and life to the Lord. Didn't cost me a thing. But guess what? For me to go on with my relationship, I have to be a disciple now. I have to grow up. I have to I have to get off, as the Bible says, get off the milk of the word and get on the meat of the word. And I have to become a disciple. Well, what is discipleship? Well, go back and read what Jesus is discipling. They did everything but burn their ships. Because they said, I don't need any of this. I'm following him. So what are you saying? I'm saying salvation is free. Discipleship costs you everything. And because you will slowly get rid of everything that is not important in your life. Because when it comes down to it, and you know what? I, I hear it all the time and from, from Joshua. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Break down what that really means. No matter what, me, my wife, and my children will serve the Lord. If I have to stand up to the face of hell, we will serve the Lord. By the way, just so you know, and I'm not speaking out of turn, we are lucky as can be in this country. Because in other countries, they don't put guns to their family's head and say, deny the Lord or I'll kill them. And I'm not kidding. That is not just, oh, I heard that. That is fact. Plenty of reports about it. And you know what? If you don't love God enough that you wouldn't deny him, well, I'll say it like this. Fear not him that can destroy just the body. Fear him that can destroy both body and soul. He wasn't just talking about yours. If he is not first. If he's not first. I'll say it like this. I don't know what the future holds. It's like, it's like Sister Jerry said. I don't know how long it's going to be before we're raptured out, but I do know the way that this world is going to go. Well, how do you know? Well, I read the book. Lay it out. I know how this world is going to go. Let me lay it out in this plan. If he is not first in your life, you will not survive. Well, you won't survive the eternal. Because there's simply this. There's two choices throughout our There's two choices for eternity. Jesus said, the whole life is going to give you life life more abundant. But it also says the wages of sin is death. But it's appointed that the man wants to die. So we're all going to die at once. But a spiritual death is eternity in hell. With no, with no light from the, from the light of the world. With no joy from the one who is pure joy. With no connection to the Father. No connection to my Savior. And nothing to speak to me. That is an eternal death. How serious is it? It's that serious. If you don't believe me, guess what? I've laid out scripture to everything I've said. If you don't think I quoted the scripture right, great. Go find it. If you can show me I was wrong, fine. But go find it. Because it's coming time that if you just take the preacher at his word, the only word you ever get is what we preach, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. I love every preacher in here. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. I love every preacher in here. And I don't rely just on me. And I would say, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't say they rely just on me. You know, we said we're going to talk about God's timing. I'll say it like this.
Here's God's time. It was appointed unto you right that today you were going to hear a message that's going to lay out maybe something that you hadn't really thought about. That maybe there was something in your life that you didn't think was a big deal. That maybe he's trying to show you now it is a big deal. By the way, I don't do this to try to, I don't, number one, I wish I could preach this like this, but I got to preach it again. But number two, I definitely don't preach this to anger or meanness or bitterness. I promise you, I bring this to love. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't say nothing like this. I'd just say, hey, we're all great. Good. You know, that's the hot time. Today, I'll say it like this. God cares enough about you. Jesus had enough care for you that he saw that there was a failing in your life. Whether it be bigger or through misunderstanding or anything else. But he saw that there was a family in your life that left unchecked could send you to a devastation. He loved you enough to say, I need to fix that. This is a gotcha or hurt somebody. This is 100% true. God is reaching out to his people because he never wants to make it. He never wants to leave us on the earth. And he wants to give us the tools to, to expand and to make it. And I guess what? Sometimes that comes from someone like me. Who, I'll just be honest with you, I'm not the smartest. I don't have a big vocabulary, so the only thing I can do is lay it out for my time. But I'm getting ready to call her. Now, number one, if you've never accepted it, if you've never accepted the free gift of salvation of Jesus, now's the time. Because number one, the paradigm. Because I promise you, the only way to heaven is through Jesus. I don't care what this world says, I don't care what they say about your needs, how good a person you are. I promise you, good people die and go to hell every single day. Mm -hmm. The only thing that will get you to heaven is the acceptance of the pain of your sin through Jesus Christ. That's it. It's the only way. It's just how it is. The sin that has to be paid, and you're going to pay it, or you take his to pay it. So, if you've never done that, here's the offer. Here it is. I beg you to come. If you haven't accepted that, but yet now maybe it's the time where we're growing, and there's things that maybe throughout this message that God's kind of showed you. Hey, you need to fix this. What this is. What this is. Like you said earlier, we're a living sacrifice. I have to die out of myself daily. Daily. I thank God that He brings to grace. Because if you didn't, how could I fix it? If you didn't, how could I go to him and say, I don't want this anymore? So, thank God he loves me enough to correct me. Sometimes, Zach's got to be on the altar. Not sometimes, a lot of times. A lot of times, Zach has to be on the altar. So, if he shows you some things, 
hey, <coughs> you need to fix this. Or this is something that has you in front of me. By the way, now that you know that, remember how I said I was held more accountable as I grew? Once the word gets spoken, the word gets taught, it's kind of like, like when you raise a child, told you once. If you disobey again, you knew better. So as I call prayer time, as they come to get a song, I beg, plead. I don't think I can get this off my heart enough. Please do not think. That's it. If there is something that is rolling around in your mind and in your spirit that maybe the Lord is trying to show you, and there's a part of you that's trying to justify it, that's what you need to get rid of. If there is something you're trying to justify right now, that's what he's trying to fix. And I promise, letting it go is a whole lot easier.
So I got a question for you. I've got a ring up here. Oh, oh wow. It's all right. Are you afraid of dying? No. Okay. He said something that sent me to Romans up here a while ago. And about Christian people, how people were after Christian and not, you know, still doing their own thing. And it took me to Romans 2. And it says, you know, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. But it goes on to say in verses 13 through 18, their throat is open specular, but their tongues they can use deceit, they poison, and is under their lips. <clears throat> yeah, we've come in to churches, people across this country, maybe in this church, I don't know, I've not heard anything. But we go outside, we profess our Christianity, but yet we say stuff that's going to dishonor God. Oh, we can't do that. That one little thing can cost you your salvation. One little thing. Whose right. mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Are you bitter? Do you say bitter things to people? Do you curse outside of, I mean, things about that kind of stuff? Do you actually put curses of saying curse somebody? You know, those kind of curses. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Not just, you know, not physical blood, but, you know, you find out something about somebody, you just want to hurt their feelings so bad, you just can't handle them. And, then, you know, but yet, people come into church, you know, look at me, I'm right here, I'm here every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, whatever churches they're going to, they're going to but yet they're out blaspheming people, hurting people on purpose. Destruction and misery are in their ways. They look, misery loves company. Think of that. And the way of peace have they not known. But then verse 18 is what I get at. In this country, and in churches across America, I don't know about this church, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Do you not fear God anymore? Or you just think, I'm hunky dory, this is the way it's going to be? There's no fear of the Lord anymore, anywhere. You know, I, I'm saved now. You know, I'm not afraid of that. But if you're not saved, you should be scared to death of that. You should be. And, you know, that's had a great message to it. It's all about commitment, not just being here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Committed 24-7 with the Lord. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord all day long, every day. We just come in here to get filled back up and turn each other in fellowship and love. Because outside this world, a lot of people don't love us. They'll say it to your face, but when you come in here, it's where we all gather together and get to see each other, hug on each other, love on each other. But that's just the way it is. So that's what, you know. I'm, I think that's religion. I think it's religion. Because that's being Christ's life. Yeah, Christ's life. Yeah. And then we talk about God's timing. I looked at my sure I was right. I was going to the pool, Bethesda and pool the Sloan. Two different instances. God never, Jesus never touched them. He just told them to get up and do stuff. But Jesus passed by those pools all the time. And that one guy laid there for 38 years. And finally, he just looked at him and said, Why are you sitting here? Why well, nobody's carrying me in the pool? Well, get up and do it yourself. That's why he said it. It's all about Jesus' his timing. I always saw you, you could crawl and get there and be no, yeah. and we went there and seen the floor was everything. You couldn't crawl and you could yeah. crawl and you could 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 crawl he was in the Word, so. How committed are you going to be from this day forward? That's what it's going to be. You know, I put a challenge out there back in December, be a better you in 2024. It's not just a one-time thing. You be better every day. Be better every day. Bless somebody every day. Just put a thank you. I love you. So, all right. Six o'clock tonight, we'll have service. And Wednesday night at seven, as of right now, we'll be at the pavilion. <laughs> But we'll see what the weather's going to do. It's supposed to be rain, sun, rain, sun for the next week.
So we'll see what it is. On hearts and minds satisfied. Everybody got what you wanted? No matter who preaches, do follow up. Look up the scriptures yourself. Find something. And try to apply something every service that you hear into your life. You will become a better person. You will. But I know if I hadn't started reading and actually studying stuff every single day, the stuff that was in me would still be in me. But I know all that stuff's gone. And that's the reason I just, by reading, when he sparks says something, I can almost now go, oh, I know where, I think I know where it is. And if I don't, I just Google it real quick. I type up two key words and I know where to go with it. So, but I've read it. I just don't know where to find it sometimes. So, but, office is still open at any time. You want to wait after church and pray, whatever, it's all good. So it's all staying. There's a lot of times I don't feel like being here. A lot of times I don't feel like doing things. And Jesus didn't feel like dying on that cross either. That's the truth. First Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you for the service this morning, Lord. We thank you for the morning and the singing and the musicians, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the ones in the sound booth, Lord. We thank you for the congregation of church, Lord. We just ask you to continue to bless them and encourage them, Lord, through your word, through fellowship, Lord, outside this church service, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word that you gave us through Brother Zach this morning, Lord, that you continue to bless his family, Lord, and continue to increase all of our knowledge and wisdom in the spirit, Lord. We thank you and praise you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. And may his countenance give you peace. In the name of all names, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the church says, Amen. 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 It's 6 o'clock tonight.